Hello, I am Alon Burstein, visiting assistant professor in the Department of Political Science and Israel Institute fellow with the University of California, Irvine, here bringing you the summary of the last 24 hours of the Israel-Hamas war. It is currently the eve of November 16, 2023 in the United States, the morning of November 17, 2023 in the Middle East. Starting with the hostage situation, the kidnapped Israelis are held in the Gaza Strip. The IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, are now confirming that there are 238 Israelis that are held hostage in the Gaza Strip. This is one lower than previously identified 239. This is because the IDF has recovered the bodies of one of the women that was previously confirmed held hostage. This is a 65-year-old woman who was kidnapped from the kibbutz of Beri. She is now confirmed dead. Her body was found in the Shifa Hospital in Gaza City. The IDF is reporting that she died in captivity. It is unclear at this point if she was executed or if she was wounded in the initial attack on October 7th and died shortly after that in captivity. In addition, in a CBS interview given today, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu stated that the IDF had found evidence that kidnapped Israelis had been held in Shifa Hospital, and this was part of the consideration of the IDF in its raid into different areas of the hospitals in the, in the last several days. In addition, he reported that once the IDF had gotten there, they discovered that the hostages had no longer been there, but they found more and more evidence that they had been there. Specifically, they referred to different laptops and photographic equipment showing that pictures of hostages and videos had been taken at the Shifa hospital. In addition, it was reported that photographs of some of the soldiers that had been kidnapped in the event of October 7th had been taken there, and that some of these photographs had been of the soldiers prior to October 7th, i.e., photographic images from different social media. What this means, we'll find out later in different intelligence reports. In addition, regarding the different speculations regarding hostage deals between Israel and Hamas, there are reports today of splits in the Israeli cabinet, with some ministers, and including Prime Minister Netanyahu, thinking that Hamas should be further and further pressured before Israel comes to deal in order to come to better conditions, as opposed to other ministers, specifically pointed to Benny Gantz and possibly Gadi Eisenkot and different rumors about different other ministers who are possibly saying that no Israel should take whatever deal is on the table at this time. In addition, it is reported that Yahya Sinwar, who is the leader of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, has, quote-unquote, disappeared from the negotiators in Qatar. Qatari negotiators cannot get in touch with him. And that the last thing he stated is as long as the IDF is operating in Shifa Hospital, he will not negotiate. In addition, it was reported today in Thailand by different Thai politicians that Hamas has assured the Thai government that the 25 Thai hostages will be released at, in the first opportunity whenever any deal comes up. Moving on to the ongoing fighting in the Gaza Strip, there were continuous rockets and missiles fired from Gaza, although less than previous days. Rockets today pr primarily targeted the southern parts of Israel. Several rockets targeted the town of Zderot and the areas surrounding the Gaza Strip. Moving on to the ongoing fighting inside the Gaza Strip, the administrator of Shifa Hospital today stated that there are still over 650 patients, 500 staff members, and over 5,000 internally displaced people that are taking refuge in Shifa Hospital. I remind everyone that yesterday it was reported the IDF was entering Shifa a second time and that bulldozers were clearing vehicles out of the main entrances in order to allow military vehicles to come in. There are no reports that the IDF moved in today, but that is what the administrator of the hospital said. In addition, the IDF reported that in Shifa Hospital, different tunnel entrances towards going down to possibly Hamas headquarters or other areas were found, as well as in the hospital areas, they found vehicles that were identical to the ones that were used in the attacks on October 7th. In addition, the IDF foreign spokesperson spoke to BBC today and stated that the activity in Shifa Hospital may take several weeks. In addition, the IDF carried out several attempted high-profile assassinations throughout the Gaza Strip against Hamas targets throughout the last 24 hours. It is unclear at this point how many of these were actually successful. These included Raushi Mushta, who is a political Hamas figure and someone who is known to be very close to the Hamas leader in the Gaza Strip, Yahya Sinwar. Issam Da'alis, who is a Hamas prime minister and a very close associate of Hamas leader Ismail Haniya. Samah al Hajar, who is a political figure in Hamas, also known associate of Yahya Sinwar, Ahmad Randur, who is the Northern Division Commander of Hamas, and Ayman Issam, who is the head of the rocket fire in Hamas. All of these were the targets of different assassination attempts. At this point, neither Hamas nor the IDF are confirming how many of them, if any, were killed. In addition, the IDF Marines reported today that they took over the commando docks of Hamas in Gaza City. And there was also reported that the IDF announced two different humanitarian pauses today in the north of the Gaza Strip, one in the area of Saja'iya and one in the area of Turkman in northern Gaza. Defense Minister Gallant today stated that the IDF has completed its clearing of western part of Gaza City and, I'm quoting, is moving on to the next phase of the battle. Again, the IDF has been closing in more and more in different parts of Gaza City, eventually 
the IDF has already been saying that it may move down south. So the western part of Gaza City has now, as far as the IDF is concerned, been cleared. In addition, the British Financial Times today reported that Israel estimates that most of Hamas leaders are actually in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip, and the different Western leaders have warned Israel about expanding its activities further down south. One specifically noted, according to the newspaper, the increased bombing that Israel has started to do down south, which is what Israel did in the north before its invasion, and the U.S. State Department today stated that Israel is considering its expansion of its ground activity and that the United States is working with Israel to coordinate this. Related to this, the IDF Chief of Staff, Herzi Alevi, today stated, and I'm quoting, As far as it is up to us, we will continue to press on wherever we need to in order to annihilate Hamas. Regarding casualties, in the last 24 hours, the IDF is reporting one soldier that was killed. The Palestinian Health Ministry has not updated its numbers in the last 24 hours, so the numbers still stand on 11,470-11,500, slash as was reported several days ago. That number has changed, as well as upwards of 29,000 people who have been injured. Moving on to the humanitarian situation in the, in the Gaza Strip, the Qatari newspaper Arab al Jadid reported today that Egypt is intending to open a second crossing, in addition to the Rafah crossing, this is called the Salah Adin Gate, which is several miles north of the Rafah crossing, to allow more humanitarian aid in. There are no reports confirming this. It does not say anywhere that Israel has authorized this. Unclear if this will happen at this time. The head of UNRWA, Felipe Lazzarini, stated today that he has a sense that there is a desire to strangle the organization. Amidst this, UNRWA reported today that sewage has started to flow in some areas of Rafah as a result of sanitation plants being shut down due to lack of fuel. In addition, after warnings of crashes that may happen on Thursday, the Palestinian telecommunications companies today reported that their communications arrays have crashed and that internet and phone services throughout the Gaza Strip have effectively failed. Yesterday, it was reported that Israel is coordinating with UNRWA to allow refueling stations for UNRWA facilities in Rafah Crossing, with some 24,000 liters of fuel. These reports do not mention any of that. Unclear at this point if that has happened. It is reported that no trucks, no humanitarian aid trucks, that those are the trucks that are carrying food, water, and medical supplies, entered the Gaza Strip today, in part due to UNRWA shutting down as a result of lack of fuel. Moving on to the West Bank, the Hamas military operation in the West Bank today claimed responsibility for a Palestinian attack in what is called a tunnel checkpoint. This is an area in the northern part of Jerusalem. In this attack, one IDF soldiers, soldier was killed, two were badly injured, and three more were injured. The attack involved three Palestinians who stormed the checkpoint and were killed. In their car, what was found was two assault weapons, axes, two guns, over 10 clips with hundreds of bullets, and according to intelligence, it is believed that they planned to actually infiltrate Jerusalem and carry out a large-scale attack, but were stopped at a checkpoint. In addition, there was reported substantial IDF activity in Janin and Janin refugee camp today. Two Palestinians were injured and three more were reported killed later on. It's unclear if these were the two that were injured or not, and that the IDF is surrounding the Ibn Sina hospital in Janin. In addition, Secretary of State Blinken today spoke to Benny Gantz, who is a member of Israel's war cabinet, and he emphasized, among other things, the need to deal with radical settler violence, and stated, once again, that this is compromising Israeli, Israeli stability and threatening to open a second front for Israel in the West Bank. In total, in the West Bank today, 33 Palestinians were arrested by the IDF. 20 of these are reported to be Hamas operatives. Moving on to the north part of Israel, the southern parts of Lebanon, there were continuous rockets and missiles fired today from Lebanon into various different parts of Israel. There were specific mortar fires fired towards IDF outposts alongside substantial RPG or anti-tank missiles against different areas, specifically the area of Dovev, and different rockets targeted the western Galilee area. The IDF retaliations after the different mortar fires and RPGs included substantial artillery and aerial activity. In addition, the IDF reported an initiated activity, so it's an activity that is not in retaliation to specific fire, but actually specifically being proactive in pursuing different Hezbollah targets. And this targeted several different Hezbollah infrastructures and reportedly a Hezbollah activist that was on the border between Israel and Lebanon. Following this IDF activity, there were additional RPG barrages against different IDF outposts. Hezbollah reported today two more of its activists were killed, bringing the total number of Hezbollah activists since the war began to be killed to 76. In addition, the Syrian army today reported that Israel attacked several different areas in Damascus. Israel made no comment. It is unclear at this point if this relates to militia activities or other activities within Syria. Moving on to the regional area, Israeli intelligence is cautiously confirming the report that I gave a few days ago about the meeting between Iran's Supreme Leader Khamenei 
and Ismail Haniya. So I reported that in this meeting that happened several weeks ago between the leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, and Iran's Supreme Leader, Khamenei, Khamenei stated that Iran is not going to enter the war and that Hamas needs to stop pressuring Hezbollah from entering the war because Hamas had not coordinated when the war would be initiated with Iran. Later, Hamas denied this. Israeli intelligence is cautiously confirming, saying that the report was true, however, that Israel is not lowering its guard in the north. In addition, relating to this, Ismail Ka'ani, who is the head of the Al-Quds force in the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, sent an open letter today to Hamas's military wing leader, Muhammad Def, in which he reaffirmed the Al-Quds force's commitment to Hamas and to unity. However, importantly, in this letter he did not state that the Al-Quds force is going to join the fight or anything like that, just more expressing general support. In addition, the Foreign Minister of France they stated in a message to Iran, I'm quoting, Expanding the conflict in Gaza will not benefit anyone, and Iran will bear the brunt of responsibility. So this again shows us that in Europe at least there's growing concern that Iran is going to activate its various different militias, possibly even get involved itself in the war, and France is trying to issue its warnings to curtail that. Moving on to some of the political and general trends that developed throughout the last 24 hours, in Israel, Minister of Finance and Minister in Israel's Ministry of Defense, Vitaly Smotrich, tweeted today about the war cabinet, stating that the war cabinet has lost its way, and that since Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, is dictating the terms of any hostage negotiations, Israel should break off all discussions and should dictate with its actions how, Hama- how the negotiations are going to be conducted. Vitaly Smotrich is one of the most hawkish leaders in Israel's general cabinet, not the war cabinet. He has been the one who, or one of the people, who from the beginning of the war said Israel should conduct the war regardless of the hostages. He is now calling on the Israeli war cabinet to break off all negotiations with Hamas and to dictate terms on the ground. In addition, other political developments, Jordanian foreign minister today reported to Al Jazeera that Jordan has canceled its planned deal with Israel regarding energy and water exchanges as a result of the, of the war in Gaza. In addition, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant today stated that Israel is planning to allow the return of civilians to some of the attacked areas in Israel at the beginning of 2024. So all the areas surrounding the Gaza Strip that Hamas attacked on October 7th have been evacuated, and according to Gallant, some of these areas Israel is going to allow Israeli civilians to return to at the beginning of 2024, which gives us some estimate regarding how at least he is seeing the progression of the war in the coming months. In addition, it was reported in Germany that Oh, upwards of 70 raids were carried out in different areas against different establishments that are suspected of harboring Hezbollah activity. So it was reported already a week ago that Hezbollah was trying to carry out an attack in Brazil against different Jewish and or Israeli entities. Now Germany has carried out a large-scale raid against possible Hezbollah activity in the country. Moving on to the future speculations regarding what will be in the Gaza Strip. In a conversation with Egyptian Foreign Minister today, Secretary of State Blinken emphasized the U.S. objection to any forced Palestinian immigration out of the Gaza Strip. Such sentiments come amidst different reports in Israel and different pressures in Israel to possibly re-establish either settlements in the Gaza Strip or forcibly evacuate Palestinians from the area. Relating to this, a leader in Israel's settlements in the West Bank, the council leader of the Shamron Settlement Bloc, today announced that he's organizing a campaign to re-establish settlements in the Gaza Strip, stating, Victory over Hamas will, it constitutes reclaiming of our land. The north of the Gaza Strip is only the first step. In his CBS interview today, Netanyahu stated, I'm quoting, We do not want to reoccupy Gaza. We want general military responsibility to ensure that terrorism does not raise its head again. Liberating the Palestinians from Hamas will give them a real future. We need a real cultural change. Asked about the possibility of a two-state solution, he added, I am am saying the Palestinians will be able to govern themselves, but will not have the powers to threaten Israel. After this, in an ABC report, Secretary of State Blinken stated that Netanyahu and the U.S. administration do not see eye to eye regarding the future of the Gaza Strip, and he stated that there may be an interim period in which Israel will have some control, but that Israel cannot have control over the area indefinitely. Also relating to this, Foreign Minister of France today, after stating that settler violence is a terrorism policy that Israel has in the West Bank, stated, and I'm quoting, Israel will not be the one who determines who will govern the Gaza Strip. The Strip will be part of a future Palestinian state. So once again, as I end most of these reports, what that tells us is right now there is no actual plan for what's going to be in the Gaza Strip, and all the sides are escalating more and more regarding rhetoric about what might happen, but no one has the actual plan of what is intended to happen if and when Hamas is actually destroyed. That is my report for the last 24 hours. I'll be back tomorrow.